Uh, well, here we are getting ready to uh, go uh, play a, a hot Fresno State team. They, they've done a really good job of uh, playing good football lately. Got a big win against San Diego State. Obviously, we're coming off a, a frustrating Saturday uh, against Utah State. So, uh, did some good things early on. Obviously, down the stretch, uh, weren't able to close it out. So, we got to continue to work on that and get better. But the boys have done what they've done all year. Came in, did a great job coming in Sunday night and responding. Had a great practice today. Um, you know, we know the challenges ahead of us. Uh, Fresno's played uh, a good brand of football. You know, they've, uh, you know, Coach Tedford's taken a team, I believe 20 of the 22 guys that, uh, that are starting are guys that were already there, and he's done a really good job of, uh, you know, injecting some life into them. Uh, big deal with the quarterback transfer. Um, he, he's been a big difference. I mean, I think when you, when you look at that spot and you find the right guy, it can really settle a, an entire program, especially an offense down. So they've done a great job of playing good defense and, uh, and taking what you give them on offense and, and developing a physical team over the course of the year. So uh, we got our work cut out for us. But like all the games that we've talked about coming down the stretch, all winnable games, you know, all losable games, you got to go and execute at a high level. And we're going to have to continue to score early in games and, and show that we can continue that throughout the course of the game into the third and fourth quarter. And defensively, we just got to be more consistent in getting stops and then playing better on special teams. So, again, another great opportunity for us, and we're excited to go play the Bulldogs. What's the way to start Armani? You know, day to day. So same thing, concussion protocol held him out today. He was out of practice with us. You know, you want to see those symptoms completely go down. They've decreased every day. Um, but we want to make sure he's got zeros across the board before you throw him on out there. If, he's, if you feel Thursday he's still not ready, would you need to maybe leave him home? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think he's going to come no matter what to the game. Um, he, you know, uh, he's an important member of our team, you know, at that spot. And, again, we probably won't know. Um, we'll, we'll probably know by the end of Thursday, Thursday evening. You know, we have a Friday practice, obviously. We get a lot of work done on Fridays. So we'll, we'll see. We're just going to kind of let the doctors do what they do. We're in no rush on our end. we got two great guys that are capable of playing quarterback. Um, they had a great practice today. So we'll see how the whole week transpires. But regardless, the game plan set, and it'll be in. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get them both equally ready. You know, today, um, you know, I think they probably got equal reps. You rotate them both with the ones, both with the twos. Uh, you know, they have. They're similar but different at the same time. You know, you look at a guy like Kurt who we know he can run the ball well. He's got some starts under his belt. You know, Johnny Stan's a heck of a football player. You know, when you look at uh, last year and the way he started, you know, he had a great week one. Week two, he takes us, gives us a chance to win the game in the fourth quarter at UCLA. Had a great game. Um, struggled early on in the game against Idaho, but when the game was all said and done, he had over 140 yards rushing, over 200 yards passing, brought us back in that game and unfortunately tore a knee. Um, and, and that ended, and then he comes back and he finds himself behind, you know, a great freshman, Armani Rogers. So he didn't lose the job because he wasn't a good quarterback. You know, uh, Armani took the job, you know, uh, probably by, you know, the, the, just by the skin of a hair. You know, I mean, uh, the, the kind of, we know Armani's the future and a great player, but we also know that Johnny Stan's a heck of a football player. And, and if he's got to go and play a bunch, he'll be, we'll be just fine with him. For uh, Armani, is there like a, a final hurdle or a thing you want to see him clear? Is it the doctor's clearance or is there something you want to see from him before you'll know or is it more of a fail thing? It, well, you honestly, no, no. It's completely doctor's clearance. So they, they start off literally, there's concussion protocol. Um, every sport has it now. So th th there are certain things that they test, and you want to, you know, the initial symptoms on game day. Then the next day they were lessened. You know, I'm not going to go into specific numbers, but then today there was even lessened. And it's not just the symptoms, it's the severity of the symptoms. Because, you know, for example, you might have, you know, 20 symptoms, and in those 20 symptoms, you, you could have anything from a severity of a 4 to a 20, right? So you want to see those things all drop to a safe zero level across the board, and they'll let us know when that happens. And then from a coaching perspective, once he's been cleared, you want him to play confident. Any player you put on the field, it's a physical game. You want to make sure they're comfortable out there and they're not worried about it at all, because if they are, they increase the risk of, uh, of something bad and not, not even be ahead. It could be something else happening again. So you want the player to be comfortable once the doctors have cleared it, but as far as that process goes, coaches completely divorce ourselves from that. Coach was wondering, uh, Lexington Thomas had about 140 yards in the first uh, half last week and then about 21 yards in the second half. Did you guys piece that uh, t together? Did you figure that out based on film, what had happened? Well, you, you saw early on, you know, if you watch the game, you know, he, uh, th there was, he had a run and kind of came up a little gimpy, so we pulled him on out. X went back in. Um, he went back in. 
wasn't 100 percent. Was wasn't severely hurt or anything, but just kind of got tweaked his ankle a little bit. So if you notice in the second half, he came in and out a bunch. You know, uh, Xavier got more of the carries in that second half. Um, he was with us the majority of that first drive, um, and then later on we kind of you know turned it over to X a little bit. His, his number of carries really lessened, but we we held him out on Sunday. He had he practiced today. Was full speed. He looked great, and he's having a heck of a year. I mean, I think he's sitting there at number eight rusher in the country. I think he's at 860 yards rushing, seven point two yards a carry. He's having one of the most dynamic years a running backs had at UNLV in school history. So uh, we're lucky to have him, and he's going to give us a chance in every game we play. How's your health other than him and Armani? Well, I mean, we'll see. Offensively, we're, we're fine. You know, I mean, um, you know, Armani being out, you know, if, if indeed he is, you know, that's a big deal. We all know about that. Really, it's you kind of on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, and the one big question mark's been that will linebacker spot. You know, I know everyone we talked about in the press conference afterwards. You know, Bailey, hopefully he'll be ready to go. He practiced today. Um, you know, behind him, you know, uh, Borg was also out last game. So he practiced today, which is a good thing. Um, Johnny did not practice at the linebacker spot, which was a good thing today. Um, so we're, we're a little thin there, um, and that's going to be an issue throughout the course of the year. You know, I mean, we talked about that a little bit, you know, and one of the hardest things is, is, is just numbers right now. We just don't have the numbers to have some of the needed depth, you know, and, uh, and it can get thin real fast. You know, we've been fortunate in the interior with the defensive line. Our numbers are a little thin there, but, you know, Big Mike and Pops have been able to, to play great throughout the course of the year. Um, there's a couple guys behind them, but there's not a lot of numbers behind, you know, guys like that. So, you know, part of it's going to be just, you know, again, you know, being a little lucky and keeping guys healthy throughout the course of the year. Tony, you guys have scored uh, three points the last three games yeah. after halftime. Have you diagnosed what's wrong coming out of halftime? Well, we've talked about that quite a bit. You know, um, you know, in, in the San Diego State game, I, I think that um, you know when we went back and we looked at it, you know, the, there was a number of different things. You know, again, able to move the ball down into scoring territory. Um, you know, not being able to be efficient in the passing game, giving up some sacks, things like that. You know, the Air Force game, it was really a couple things. Number one, we got a little conservative, um, which it makes a little bit of sense when you're first coming out in half. Um, they loaded the box up quite a bit. We should have taken probably some more shots, but then we were so limited in number of possessions. You know, we just didn't have the ball enough in that in that second half. And then again, a turnover. I mean, you you know, you're in scoring position, you're probably going to score and put the game away, and, and you have a turnover. So that's unfortunate, you know. Um, and in this last week, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what happened there. I mean, there's no you know big mystery on why that occurred. And you know, and even so, you know, we were pretty efficient early on and driving the ball down and getting ourselves in it with an opportunity to score points. We flip the field. We get on their side of the 50-yard line. And, um, you know, we miss a guy in third down running down the seam. So we punt the ball, which is fine. We're going to flip the field. The guy catches the ball in the five, ends up returning it, you know, inside our own 30-yard line. And now you got a different game on your hands. Now you're, you're playing from behind all of a sudden. So, you know, all those things come into, come into a factor. Kyle, you, you played with both Kurt and Johnny before. And offensively, you guys have had some success under them. Do you have, you know, does that help you guys confidence-wise if Armani's not in there that you know you guys have done good with those two? Uh, you know, we're definitely confident with uh, either Kurt or Armani back there. Uh, I've, like you said, I've played with both of them, and both have their strengths. Um, but in the end, you know, we just got to, on the offensive line, we're just blocking our guys up there, making sure that our quarterback stays good in that pocket. And then, uh, as we've mentioned again, Kurt's got, you know, he can run the ball for sure, and that just adds a – even be, be, uh, better dynamic with him back there. Mike, when you see a large play, like uh, the 75 yard throw from Jordan Love to Jordan Nathan uh, in film, how do you go about addressing the breakdown that happened? Um, just communicating. I feel like it's more, it's more frustrating than anything because you know we can do a lot better than that. And it's not anything we can't fix, it's just we gotta, we gotta give more. For both Mike and Kyle, uh, watching the tape with Fresno State and San Diego State, Fresno team that manhandled San Diego State on both sides of the ball, what type of uh, issues uh, are you guys facing this weekend? Um, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't call it an issue. I wouldn't say that. Nah, I mean, they're gonna be, it's going to be a competitive game. I would say that. They're a lot physical up front, a lot more physical than a lot of lines that we have faced. So I feel like my boys and me, we're ready for the challenge. Uh, it's definitely going to be a great game, like Mike said. But uh, in the end, they, they're bringing back pretty much almost everybody from last year. I'm going to be going up against most of the same people on that defense. And, uh, you know, I've, I've played against these people before. And, it, it, you know, from last year and this year, nothing's really changed. 
You know, these guys, they're on a hot streak right now. And um, we're, we haven't been on a very good hot streak right now. And we just got to get in that game. We got to get after it. We got to watch the film and everything. And uh, it just goes to show that anyone can win any game. So what is uh, Robert Stanley? You kind of obviously know him. What yeah. about him that stands out to you? Well, he, you know, he's big, he's long, he's physical, you know, and he's still really young. I think when he graduated, he was 16 years old, you know, and now so he's probably as a senior right now at 20, you know, and uh, I'm glad he's not there for a bunch of years to come, you know. But uh, love Robert, you know, his brother Ronnie played for me also, great family. Um, it's great to see him out there, you know, um, having success. And, you know, you know, we always, you know, we, we want to go beat him when we see him, you know, but, but we cheer for him otherwise. But, you know, he's a big, long guy and um, real rangy. Uh, you know, he plays a stand-up defensive end, does a good job of getting his hands on people. So him, you know, like with the rest of that defensive front, that's the one thing about him. They're, they're a big physical group. You know, they definitely want to stick in that 4-3. They want to load the box. They want to force you to do things out, you know, on, on the perimeter. Um, you know, and you saw that in that San Diego State game. They did a really good job of kind of loading the box and, and taking away what San Diego State does best. So um, we run the ball. I mean, Right now, we're having one of the best run years we've had in school history, um, doing some really good things there. We're not throwing the ball as well as we need to in order to, to win games. I mean, you talk about second half, and part of that is, is you know, a little lackluster in the passing game. We've got to be able to throw the ball down the football field. So they're going to force us to do that. I think if you're going to go win a game like this, you're going to have to show some balance. You know, we're going to have to get Keys and Boyd and Presley and Woods and, you know, and Techman and all those guys involved. we got to get them into space. You know, the one thing you haven't seen – um, as of late, there's a lot of big plays in the passing game now. I mean, um, and if you're going to run the ball as well as we do and you're going to get people to load the box, you're going to have to go ahead and, you know, and, and, and put some stress on people in the passing game. So I think that balance will help us out a little bit. Do you, do you, uh, when Tepper took over, do you think one big advantage he had there was that Fresno State had had a lot of success fairly recently and maybe that you know, they, they've proven that, that they can get it done? Well, there are, I mean, you know, it's our job to find ways to win regardless, but, I mean, they're two years removed from back-to-back -back, uh, Mountain West championships. You know, they're, uh, when, when you look at just infrastructure and, you know, they got special teams quality control coaches and offensive quality control coaches and, you know, recruiting court. I mean, they, they have a lot of infrastructural things. They have history, tradition. Um, one of the smart things that he did, and I, you know, and he's a smart guy. You know, I, I've known him for a long time since when I was at Cal High, he was at Cal Berkeley, you know, so his kid played at Monta Vista, and then I coached at Cal, so I coached against his kids. I've known him for a long time. Real good football coach. And uh, he got a bunch of ex-Bulldogs to come on back, and they have a history. They have a tradition. There's, uh, there's, there's something about being a Bulldog. And, you know, I guarantee you they're in their locker room talking about toughness and history and tradition. And there's a bunch of ex-players and people around kind of holding everybody accountable to that. And that's got them going right now. You know, that's something that, I mean, that was the whole goal to build that here. These guys are a part of that, building that so that one day people can come back and say, hey, this is what we have. This is who we are. This is what we're about. This is the expectation. We don't have that to talk about. You know, they do. Now, that'll only take you so far. I mean, that'll, that'll get you going, a great locker room, that'll get you going for the first couple plays, but it does come down to execution, you know. So um, I think, you know, that's helped them. I think there's a knowledge that they can be great there because they've been great before, you know, with Sweeney and Pat Hill and, you know, and he, even Coach DeRuder had a couple championships under his belt and now Tedford comes on in. Um, but the bottom line is they've got those guys to play really good football the last bunch of weeks. Coach, you having uh, on the heels of that, what do you think they're saying about you guys? Oh, you know what? I mean, obviously, two of their coaches were with us. You know, they're former Bulldogs, so they went back home. That's what they both told me when they were leaving. I said, Coach, we love it here, but, you know, we're going back. We're going back home. So, you know, no hard feelings there. Um, but I think they're looking at us going like, hey, this is a, this is a football team right now that um, can run the football on anybody. we got to do a great job of stopping it. we got to force them to throw the football. Um, this is a defense that um, gives up a lot of big plays. We have to take advantage of that, you know, and, and we've got to be the opposite and show that we, we can handle it. Special teams-wise, you know, I'm sure they're looking at us going, okay, there's some opportunities out there. Um, but it'll all play itself out on Saturday. I, I think that they're a staff and, and a group that's not going to overlook anybody. Uh, I think, you know, going through the last couple of years humbles you real fast. Um, and, and those kids, although a lot of them, like I remember Stanley and some of those guys, you know, watching. I, mean, I remember going to the Vegas Bowl and watching, you know, see, uh, Fresno State playing it and seeing him on the side. They've seen it. Those guys have been there, seen the championship years, seen the tough years. So they're going to have a good balance and an understanding that you can't overlook anybody. For all three of them, for all three of you guys, this is the uh... – thought of seeing the potential of this team, in the, especially the last two games, where you look at the potential and you go, wow, we jumped out with a big lead, but then see that second half, for whatever reason, collapsed. 
is that probably one of the more uh, you know, frustrating things that, that you guys can all go through? I mean, just the big lead and then, I mean, just here's our potential and then the second half is not there. Is that yeah, it's most definitely frustrating. I mean, but you can't you can't let it bring you down that much. You gotta pick it up and get it after it the next day. Um, yeah, like, like you said, it's definitely a, a frustrating thing to see that you know going to the locker room, we're up by this many points, or it's a very close game, very competitive, and then coming out and just not being able to do anything in the second half. But um, you know, we just gotta keep pushing through it. Uh, you know, I'm still I'm still very confident in the schedule that we have left and the potential of this team. And we, we just got to just gotta take it day by day. And uh, like after the game, Sunday, we had a good day. We had a great day today. And now the next thing to do is have a great day tomorrow. You know, and I think there's an appropriate level of frustration, you know, from everybody, from ourselves, from, from the team, from, you know, fans, and anyone who's been around, you know. Um, and I think it's appropriate, and I, almost, I think it's kind of healthy, too. You know, when you look at it, you know, I remember, you know, a couple years back, even at last year, you know, you go play games and you didn't really have a chance. I mean, thought you did, and you go in the game and you never were really a threat. And now we've gotten to a point where we're playing teams that are perennial bowl teams and conference contenders, teams like Air Force and Utah States, and you know, and you talk about San Diego States, and these are all teams with championships, with, with multiple bowl games, had been real successful. And you go on in, and you had a great opportunity to let slip away against Air Force. You jumped on them, had a huge lead. Um, you know, San Diego State, you're sitting there in the fourth quarter for a 27 to 10 game. You know. Um, far cry from where we were a year ago as far as just, I mean, the game was close, but we were never really in it, you know. Um, you know, you look at this last game against Utah State, and, I mean, you had three times in the first half you have a 14-point lead that disappears real fast. And even coming out of halftime, you have a tie ball game, you know, and, um, you know, and we got to find a way to, 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 to get our feet settled and, and to finish games and to play better. But we're putting ourselves in positions we haven't been in consistently before, chances to win football games. So that next evolution that it needs to happen is us finishing football games and us finding ways to win those games. We're a much more competitive team. We're putting ourselves in situations where we can talk about winning games in the second half, deep into football games. Now we have to see it and we got to go produce. Thanks, Ty. You got it, guys. Thank you.